Okay, I want to uh, thank uh, Camport for uh, inviting the Port of LA. Unfortunately, I have to do this presentation in English because my Spanish is very basic and uh, it, it's sometimes very technical where I, that I have to talk in the English language. I can do it in Dutch or German, but <laughs> not, it, uh, not Spanish. So, so uh, the, the Port of LA um, is a uh, 106 year old institution. Um, it is uh, established in uh, nine, of 1906, uh, and um, it is now a city department. Another name of the Port of LA is the uh, Los Angeles Harbor Department, and we are a proprietary department, so that means we have our own budget, uh, and we are not linked to the city budget. Uh, so we have a traditional uh, landlord port model. So what we do is we develop the land and the infrastructure, and then we go out for bid or we uh, solicit it. Uh, people that will um, load and off, on, uh, load and unload the ships. So that is the stevedoring company or a shipping line. So we are do we don't do that ourselves, um, and. Uh, we get the money out of the port, which is about uh, $375 million in maritime revenues, and that is the, the lease of the land, the cargo that we charge when it comes over our uh, docks, and the docking of the ships, and then we have also piloting fees. And that money that goes to the maintenance of the port, uh, goes to staff, uh, engineering, um, and we can also, as a uh, city entity, we can uh, put commercial papers in the market, bonds. So if we have very big projects, we go out with bonds, we attract money, and um, that are bonds that was running for 25, 30 years, but our leases with the terminals is also for that period of time. So our debt ratio and our income has the same running uh, time, uh, 25, 30 years. Um, and uh, we have to um, invest all that money back in the port. We are a diversified port. Um, we, don't, we, we are the largest container port in North America and our neighboring port, Long Beach, I will tell you a little bit uh, later about it, is uh, number two. Uh, container port because we are on the uh, Pacific with uh, China and uh, Japan and, and Korea, uh, big manufacturing uh, countries that brings all the cargo here. But we do other cargo. Uh, we have cars, brake bulk, uh, metal, liquid bulk. And here you see an, uh, an overview of, uh, of the port. Uh, this is the, only the port of LA. Um, and uh, most of that yellow is all container land. That's about um, uh, 671 uh, hectares of, uh, of, of containers. Um, you see we have here uh, about uh, 20 uh, terminals, but we have also some seven liquid bulk terminals and two smaller ones, so about 27, 29, 28 uh, uh, terminals in the port of, uh, of LA. So here you see how we are uh, joined to the hip, there is an, uh, there is an, an imaginary line uh, between the port of LA and uh, the port of uh, Long Beach. And that's become, what you see here is all landfill. It's all man-made uh, land. Um, and we grew closely to each other and now we are, um, now we are uh, sister ports. So this whole port complex does about 40% of uh, the containerized cargo in, uh, in, in the United States. And it is uh, really a very big uh, complex. And also, we have to cooperate uh, with each other um, because uh, we service the same market and also the same hinterland. Uh, about um, two-thirds of our cargo is not for the LA market, although we are living there uh, about 100 miles, 160 kilometers 
around the port, we live there with uh, 21 million people. Still, two-thirds of the cargo will go east of the Rocky Mountains to Chicago, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Memphis. And it's all done by rail. So we build infrastructure together uh, to accommodate that. So we are cooperating in, uh, um, with each other. And um, that starts with uh, safety and security studies, long-term uh, cargo uh, studies we do. Um, Alameda Corridor, I will tell you a little bit about it in other slides, but uh, that is the rail corridor. There's only one rail corridor now that goes from the port um, up to uh, downtown LA, where it goes on two tracks, the UP and the BNSF, which are two commercial rail uh, companies um, in, in the United States. Then we started to cooperate a little bit more in 2008, because uh, we were under the pressure of environmentalists and the community to clean the port. And we had to regulate the, the trucks that came to the port. We said only 2007 or newer trucks can come into the port. And you have to register them. And we charge a fee if you're not 2007. And we gave them an RFID tag. And then when they come to the terminal, they get a light, green or red, and then they come into the port. And that was to, um, to, to change the, the, the fleet of older trucks into 2007 or newer trucks. And because in the United States, we have a very strong antitrust law. So if entities uh, like ports talk with each other, we have to ask the Federal Maritime Committee, an independent committee, if they can release us from the antitrust law so that we can talk about rates and operational efficiency. We got that from the Federal Maritime Commi uh, Committee and the Federal uh, Maritime, Maritime Committee is looking that you don't increase the cost of logistics or transportation uh, necessarily high, so there, is a, there will be restriction and there will be extra cost for the consumer. So they are looking at very closely. So if we are talking together with Long Beach, we have all the meetings that we have to do, we have to submit uh, meeting minutes, what we discussed. And if they see something that is questionable, they can come back and ask questions about why are you talking about these industries? Uh, and so they are, they are very, um, very vigil on, on what we do. So, and then in 2014, we, we even opened it up because we saw bigger ships coming and uh, uh, we needed to have better uh, communication with our uh, stakeholders, the, the maritime industry, to facilitate those bigger ships that are coming. But I will tell you a little bit about it. That is uh, what we... Uh, what we did here, um, we, we, we built that environmental document with the truck program. We did now in a partnering model. So we are going away from the landlord model that we said, okay, uh, we only build the land and everything else is, is your problem industry. Now we try as, an, as a port authority to facilitate uh, meetings between the trucking companies, the railroad, the shipping lines, the stevedores, to see how we can move cargo in and out of the port more efficient. And we have uh, 41 meetings uh, uh, since uh, 2015, uh, since, in, since in year, a, a year, and, and they are all regulated under that Federal Maritime Committee uh, guideline for the antitrust law in uh, the United States. So quickly, why, why do we have to talk uh, about efficiency? And that's because we see all those bigger ships coming to the port. There's also all kinds of alliances. You have to understand that the port of LA has 13 container terminals because we were building terminals for specific shipping lines. So APL has a terminal, Maersk has a terminal, uh, Yangming has a terminal. But now with the alliances, all that cargo moves all around that complex and we have to very quickly move that out of our facilities. This is a uh, picture of um, two of the largest ships uh, in port. Um, the one, the CMA CGM in the back, 
That is an 18,000 TU vessel, and uh, the, the one in the front is a 15,000 uh, TU vessel. They came in at the same time between Christmas and New Year. And um, to accommodate that, uh, we as a port, we facilitate meeting with CMA, CGM in uh, Marseille, the headquarters in the headquarters in um, in the United States with the terminal, which is the MERS terminal here, and we did the same with with MERS. And to, because between Christmas and New Year, people want to take off, the the labor don't want to come over, but we uh, we facilitate that to make it a very efficient. Um, program for those bigger ships, and that needs to be done over and over again. The, uh, because those, those bigger ships are much more efficient than the smaller ships because they're looking at the, the cost per container uh, on that ship. And if you have a 4,800 TU vessel, plus an, and uh, um, compare that with an 18,000 TU vessel, that is about a 60% cost reduction per slot, per container. Quickly, uh, I, I got a couple of questions from uh, Jorge, uh, and, and therefore I, I move from one uh, subject to the other one because I want to cover them all. Uh, but uh, his, his question was also uh, the strategic plan. And uh, uh, we have to coordinate uh, all those uh, efforts um, uh, in, uh, in the port for uh, for that cargo that comes and, and how we, we, uh, we grow. And this is a five-year plan, but this is, this is a living document. That means that every five years, we adjust it a little bit to the market. Uh, so strategic is, is long-term, but um, you see here, we every five years, we look at the market, we, have a, we will do cargo studies, and then we will adjust our strategic plan. The underlying plan for, for this is a uh, port master plan that we have to do um, for the state because the Port of LA and Port of uh, Los Angeles are in the state land trust. That, that means we, we started more than 100 years ago. Actually, all the land is still owned by the state of California. And we have to submit to the Coastal Commission a plan how are we going to fill out all the terminals? What are we going to do? And are we still on track on, uh, on the goals that the state set for, for those ports? And that is maritime commerce, uh, navigation of, of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the channels, fishery, we are still in, 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 in fish industry, and the other one is recreation, like yacht harbors and, and empty spaces or uh, park landscape. So uh, here you see the, the, uh, the four major um, uh, strategies uh, of, of the port, uh, and, and we, we are definitely commercial focus. We want to provide the best efficient terminals for our customers, and we, we talk with them um, about it, and they submit plans, we look at it, um, and then uh, they, uh, we, will, we have a cost um, of, of, of those new upgrades, deeper wharves, uh, l bigger land, uh, more land, uh, an another uh, gate uh, system for the trucks. And that is mostly running in the millions and millions of dollars, but because we have long-term long leases, like 25, 30 years, we can uh, uh, recoup that investment over that time um, that we have a contract or an, a lease with, with those terminals. Here's uh, a little bit further with our, our container uh, strategy. Uh, we, uh, we, have, uh, we analyze the future uh, needs uh, that coming into port with long-term studies. Uh, what I mentioned, we, we closely partner with them. And uh, again, um, with, with competition like the Panama Canal that comes on, we need to be in, in, in the most efficient port in North America. Uh, we have the shortest transit time from Shanghai to uh, the port is 13 uh, days, and then with five days we are in, in Chicago. If you do all water, then you are still 28 uh, days uh, on the water. Uh, not only containers, we also have to look at non-containerized cargo because we want to diver diverse our portfolio. We don't want to put all 
our eggs in one basket. Uh, uh, we want to also break bulk. And what is more and more important is uh, service related to the industries like uh, chassis yards or um, uh, empty container yards close to the port, uh, transloading facilities, uh, which all helps uh, the service um, uh, to increase the service in this port complex. So uh, we all have to do that um, very, uh, very balanced. It is not only an economic reality, uh, but uh, we have uh, what we call uh, the triple bo uh, bottom line, and it's balancing the economic necessity, social responsibility, and the environmental uh, aspect in a, in a port. And, and also the port authority is, is managing that um, with, with the community and with our commercial stakeholders. Most of my uh, presentation has touched on, on, on the economic aspect, but we have also other uh, responsibilities. Uh, and uh, we have to do that economic, in an economic sustainable way. So that means that we have, that we financially we are strong, that we don't, we don't borrow any money, of, we borrow money, but we don't get any tax revenue from the local uh, city, the state, or the federal government to run our port. That's all self-supported. And uh, we, we invest a lot of uh, money in, uh, in, in the port that goes to, uh, we spend $1 million in grants for education to see, to, to educate uh, the people for jobs in the port. Um, we look uh, at, uh, at, at, at other uh, plants like open landscape, uh, parks. Uh, we deindustrialize some of the, uh, uh, the, the, the container terminals that are closest to the community and move them away. And uh, here is, an, is an how, how we uh, put money in our budget for, that, um, for the, those efforts. And you see here we, we will spend uh, for the next uh, 10 years, uh, or, um, we spend about uh, 4 million, uh, 400 million dollars and that is 200 million for new projects and 200 to maintain the projects that we already have uh, on, uh, on the books. So our mayor has said that a strong uh, port is, is good for the community and, and a strong uh, community is good for the port. And uh, we have uh, uh, invested about 600 million dollars in infrastructure over the last 12 years and have created about 40 acres of uh, waterfront promenades and public spaces. Um, and that is those buffer zones between the community and uh, heavy industrial on, on the other side. And this in initiative uh, ties back to the mission of creating jobs, community improvement, and business development opportunity above and beyond our traditional role as a cargo port. So, as uh, I want to uh, finish uh, my last slide uh, with the Alameda Corridor, um, the, uh, the, in the industry in, um, the, the rail industry in, in North America is all held by privately held companies. And we had four rail tracks into the port. And there were 200 uh, great separations. So, people of uh, streets that goes over that, uh, over that rail. And because so many rail cars comes in and out of the port, all those people on those 200 uh, crossings need to wait. So there was a, a very uh, big economic uh, downturn for people that are waiting, pollution, because the cars are idling there. And a train, is, uh, a train can be two uh, miles long, so a little bit over a uh, kilometer, kilometer long. They, uh, uh, no, it's not two kilometers, it's, it's three uh, kilometers. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the, they, they came together, uh, that was the cities in, in the LA Basin, to say we have to address all the traffic that comes into the port, not only rail, but also on, on the road. But the rail was uh, established, and uh, they established the Alameda uh, Corridor, which is a joint power association between the city of LA and the city of Long Beach. And there are two representatives of each port, a commissioner uh, of each port and the executive director. Plus there is one from the city and a representative. And then you have the county 
of Los Angeles is also in, in, this, uh, in this Alameda corridor. And we as a port, uh, we have the responsibility for the financial well-being of this corridor. So also they have put um, commercial papers, bonds on the financial market to finance an, uh, a rail track that goes 20 miles and 10 miles it goes underground or in a, in a trench. So all the cars goes over it. And uh, they invest um, $3.4 billion. And the cargo volume in that corridor needs to be on a certain uh, height to pay the bonds, to pay that interest. If, because we are in a uh, recession, like we had in 2002, 2008, we came under that threshold, then the two ports is responsible for paying the interest on the bonds. We were there almost in 2009, but then the next year it picked up and, and they, were, they were good. So we, we cooperate with each other and uh, we have all kinds of um, um, uh, contracts with the, port, uh, with the port authorities, LA and Long Beach, but we also compete. So I'm on the commercial side and if I can steal a container from Long Beach, I will do that. So uh, with that, I am uh, coming to the end of uh, my uh, presentation, and uh, I hope there are some questions that I can answer. Thank you very much. <laughs>